Hello, my name is Rebecca, and I am your host. Welcome to another episode of Stuck Stories, a journey of survival, bravery, and adventure. Plug in your imagination and come along with me for today's episode of Stuck Stories. Brimbiloquent fire? We can cook over a fire? One minute you're bouncing around, the next you're sad and thinking about these deep life questions. Way too deep for a nine-year-old. Ugh, fine! I'll just starve. Nothing can scare me. <laughs> ah! What's that? The fire alarm's going off. What do we do? <coughs> we put the fire out. <laughs> What is that? What is going on in this house? Brady, what happened? The longer I stay in a bad situation, the worse I feel, and the harder it seems it is to get out of it. If I can't take a walk, play with my cats, or watch a funny movie, then I start to feel like things will never get better. I wonder if that's the way Clarabelle and Brady feel. Let's find out on today's episode of Stuck Stories. Okay, now you name a page number. Um, 54. All right, let's see. You're in the B's, and your word is... Uh, brev, brev, breviloquent. Breviloquent. Wow, okay. That sounds like a spell a wizard would say. <laughs> a spell for what? I don't know. It makes me think of brilliant, so like they flick their wand and can make someone really smart. Okay, now use it in a sentence. Am I close? <laughs> Not at all. Use it in a sentence. The wizard was tired of her brother Brainy being dumb, so she said briviloquent at him, and suddenly he was as smart as she was. Hey, that's not nice. Oh, not you, Brady. I was thinking of someone else with a brother named Brady. A wizard. Uh-huh. Briviloquent means speaking with few short words. What? Then why is briviloquent such a long word? <laughs> Good point. It should just be brev. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, your turn again. Let's do page 345. Okay. It's going to be a T word. Tushy. Stop. <laughs> How about taxonomine? Taxo... Oh, no, it's taxonomy. Taxonomy. <laughs> okay, I'll say that's when something is your fault. What? Used in a sentence. When I missed blocking the goal, I told my soccer team, Sorry, guys. Tax on a me. Huh? <laughs> Get it? Tax on a me. That's on me. Looks like the breviloquent spell didn't work. Okay. One more time, then we need to eat something. Give me page 250. Let's see. You got a P. No, I don't. I'm ignoring that. Your word is... Panacea. Panacea. Hmm. Okay. Panacea is a faraway island where unicorns live. And they make popcorn over a fire and eat cotton candy all day. And they never get sick of it or have to brush their teeth because there aren't any cavities. And everyone is always outside because it's always sunny. And there are no avalanches because it never snows. Wrong. you got to be kidding me. Panacea is an answer or solution for all problems. I should get a point for that. Unicorns make everything better. Okay, fine. You get a point. Yes! But only because I'm the best brother ever, and I really want to go to Panacea, too. It's a hot spot. Okay. Let's put the dictionary away and figure out what to eat. If we were in Panacea, we could eat popcorn and cotton candy for dinner. Yeah, I'd be down for that. What do we have? I don't know. Let's look in the pantry. There can't be much there since Dad had to go and get supplies this morning. Uh, I see some cans of soup. Chicken noodle? Tomato. Pass. There's a jar of olives. Double pass. Some mayonnaise, mm. a can of tuna, and dry black beans. Ugh, fine! I'll just starve. Where's the candy and the mac and cheese? You know, normal people food. Oh, wait, look! What? What is it? Popcorn! Ah! No way! Panacea! But it's not in a bag. It's loose kernels. Not in a bag? That'll make the microwave real messy. You don't cook it in the microwave. You cook it over the stove top. Or a fire. I did it once on a camping trip with scouts. A fire? We can cook over a fire? Of course you can cook over a fire. 
but we can't go outside. How about the fireplace? Please, can we make popcorn in the fireplace? I don't know. Yay, we're gonna do it! I didn't say yes. You would say no. Brady, 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 Oh, stop it, stop. Brady. You know I hate that. <laughs> Sorry, I just really want to do this. It's just like Panacea. Everything is happening just like in my imagination. Well, except without the unicorns. Um... You'd be the best brother in the whole world. I mean, you are the best brother in the world. You've already kept us safe. You cleaned the broken glass, and now you found food. You're right. It's too much for me to want my dreams to come true after all that you've already done. I know what you're doing, and I want you to know... It's working. Yes! So we're gonna make popcorn in the fire! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Okay, okay, but I know what I'm doing and you don't, so you have to stay back while I make the fire and let me handle things. Yay! I love you! I love you too. And I love popcorn! I think that was the last of it. So we get to eat? Yeah, we get to eat. Let me just remove this pot from the embers. Oh, it smells so good. I'm starving. Careful. Looks like some of the pieces on the bottom are a little burnt, but most of it's good. Yay! Now for salt and spices. Lots of salt! Okay, and for extra flavor, I found some oil, Italian seasoning, and paprika, because we, we fancy! fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you learn so much about cooking? I don't know. Oh, some from mom, some from scouts, the internet. You do so much. Scouts and soccer. You cook? I can't do that much. You could. You just don't. No, I don't think I could. Why not? You just find what you like and do it. It's just, I haven't liked doing much for a while. You mean since mom? Yeah. Well, since before even. Since she got sick. I know. Well, that would make anyone slow down. But not you. You do so much all the time. I'm different. I don't feel like doing anything or being with anyone. I mean, I want to, but I don't feel like it. But Clarabelle, I see you at school. You have a million friends. You look like you're always goofing around and having fun. I know, but it's kind of just pretend. I act all happy at school because I really want to be happy. But when I stop or I come home, I feel so sad. I miss being happy. I mean, really. What about up here? You seemed a lot happier in the mountains. I mean, well, before the avalanche. Well, even since. I know things are scary, but we've had some real fun, too. Have you been faking that? No, but up here is different. Why? Because the mountain house makes me feel close to Mom. It was her favorite place, and I love coming here. Remember right before she started her last treatment, we all came up here? Yeah, October before last, for her birthday. Yeah. We wanted to have one more normal time here together before her next round. And that really was the last time I felt normal. Like myself. I feel like I was a different person back then. Like it all happened to somebody else. I haven't felt like myself anywhere else for such a long time. That's why I asked Dad if we could come here for the one year anniversary. Even last night when we first got here, although it was dark, even just the smell of it made me feel a little bit more back to normal. It's hard to believe tomorrow will be a year. Part of me thinks it's been the longest year of my life, and the other part thinks, how has it already been a year? And how have I forgotten so much so soon? It's definitely felt like a long year to me. Ten years. A million. I don't like thinking about it. About time passing and things happening without her. That's why when Dad talked about coming up here, I told him I didn't want to. It feels wrong to be here without her. Like something... Someone is missing. But when Dad said he thought it would really help you out, I told him okay. You didn't have to do that. I don't need you to take care of me. I'm your big brother. It's what I do. And you know I like to do things. Yeah, but I just wish I could feel different. That I could act different. I'm not myself. I miss Mom, and I, I'm doing this wrong. Clarabelle, people deal with bad things differently. 
And it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you just because you handle things a certain way. I like to do things to forget about all the bad stuff. It keeps my mind off of it, at least for a while. And you like to do nothing for a while until you're ready to be silly for a bit. And that's okay too. It's all called coping and it's how we get through. I mean, not even thinking about mom. Look at this avalanche. One minute you're bouncing around, the next you're sad and thinking about these deep life questions. Like super deep, like way too deep for a nine-year-old. You are so smart. And me? Well, I wanna do anything but think about the bad stuff. So I clean, I cook, I come up with games. Anything to distract me from being sad. And honestly, I wish I were a little more like you. I should stop and think more. And I wish I were like you and felt like doing more, more often. So you wish you could do more, I wish I could do less. If we were one person, we'd be doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we'd be this wacky two-headed monster, but we'd be happy about it and could handle anything. I didn't want to come up here when Dad talked about it. I know you love it up here, but I don't. Not anymore. It reminds me too much of Mom, and that really hurts. There are all these ghosts here. Not, not real ghosts. I mean, like memories. Everywhere I look. And now that we're stuck and there's less to do, it's even harder to get away from them. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't think. But I do feel closer to Mom up here, and that makes me happier. Plus, I don't have to worry about what other people think about me. If I'm sad enough, if I'm too sad. Up here, I only have to worry about me and you. I don't want you to worry about me. But I don't want you to feel scared. Oh, stop. Don't worry about me. You make me want to be fearless. No Frady Brady? No Frady Brady. Ha. Now I'm Bravey Brady. <laughs> that is so bad. <laughs> Nothing can scare me. <laughs> ah! What's that? I don't know. There it is again. What is it? Oh, it's probably the house. The weight of the snow is probably making the house shift a little. Well, I don't like it. Well, it could be a good sign. Maybe it means things are starting to melt. Or that there are people up there walking around looking for us. Or that the whole house is going to collapse. Shh. Don't talk like that. Do you want any more popcorn? No, thanks. I'm stuffed. Popcorn fills me up so fast. <laughs> me too. Thanks for the trip to Panacea. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really think they're going to find us? Absolutely. <coughs> Do you smell that? Oh no, the smoke is coming out of the chimney. <coughs> Why? Oh jeez. The snow must be trapping the smoke at the top and it's filled the chimney and it's coming into the room. <coughs> <coughs> the fire alarm's going off. What do we do? <coughs> we put the fire out. Hand me that fire extinguisher. <coughs> <coughs> Here. Stand back. <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <clears throat> Here, let's take a seat on the couch for a minute. <laughs> Catch our breath. That was scary. It's all good now. Just a little hazy in here. Do you hear something? What? I hear a sound, like music. Is it the fire alarm in another room? Not a beep. Music. You don't hear it? Oh, yeah. Where is it coming from? Down the hall. Come on. It's coming from Mom and Dad's room. Over here. On the dresser. It's the little music box in Mom's jewelry case. How did it start playing? Aww. I forgot all about her music box. It must have gotten jostled when the house was creaking. Mom's pink ribbon is in here too. Yeah. It's still got the pin in it. What's that song? You are my sunshine. Oh, right. Remember when we'd come up here, she'd wind this up every night before going to bed. Yeah. Please don't take my sunshine away. <laughs>
What is that? I don't know. Oh no! What is going on in this house? Brady, what happened? Looks like a wooden plank from the ceiling fell on the couch and broke the lamp. From the snow shifting? I don't know. Maybe? That could have killed us. It's okay. We're fine. It didn't get us. We're lucky, right? But it almost did. We were sitting right there two minutes ago. I know. It was close, but we're okay. Good thing that music box started playing, huh? Brady, do you think Mom... Clarabelle? I think we've had enough excitement tonight. But... Time for bed, okay? We'll clean this up in the morning. Okay. Will you tuck me in? Sure. Go brush your teeth. Yeah, I've got some kernels stuck. All clean? Uh, see? Perfect. Get under the covers. Brady, I'm scared. Don't worry. We're safe. I'll tell you when you can be scared. We just have to wait a little longer for rescue. I bet they'll find us tomorrow. You know Dad's doing everything he can to help us. And Mom, too. Okay. Hey, I never finished the polka-dotted hippo story. Peter! Right. Peter. I remember how it goes now. What happens? All right. Peter the polka-dotted hippo was being made fun of for his spots. One day it was super-duper hot, and so Peter wanted to go to the watering hole to get cool. But... He didn't want to get laughed at, so he decided to cover himself in gray paint so he looked normal. But I like his spots. But he didn't. And he didn't like that all the animals were making fun of him. So he walked outside, all covered in gray paint, and the animals laughed at him anyway. Why? They could tell he just painted himself. So the animals were laughing at him, and the jackal said, You can't hide from us. We know who you are. So Peter ran back inside, crying. Oh, poor Peter. Well, while he was inside, Peter thought long and hard. And he realized that he couldn't hide who he was. And he was tired of being stuck in the house. I know how you feel, Peter. Right. So Peter walked outside again with all the animals laughing at him. They laughed at him the whole time he walked to the water. And when he got to the water, it washed off all the gray paint. But he didn't run away or hide. He stood there until the animals stopped laughing and he said to them, I am what I am and I have pink polka dots all over. And then what? And then something pretty amazing happened. The animals accepted Peter because once they saw he liked himself, they started to like him too. And Peter forgave them and they all became friends. Oh, I like that. Peter was pretty brave. Yeah. I like to think about how he felt when he was walking to the water. He didn't know everything was going to turn out okay, but he believed it would. And he believed in himself, so he just kept going. Can you tell me another story? Not tonight. Time for bed. Close your eyes. Okay. Let me wind the music box. Hey! Did you turn out the lights? No. I think the power went out. Now can I be scared? Poor Clarabelle and Brady. I hope they're going to be all right. I'm starting to get really worried. It makes me feel better to know that they have each other. I love how Brady takes care of Clarabelle, and you know what? I think she helps him out too. Do you remember at the very beginning of the episode when Clarabelle and Brady were playing a word game? They found a big word in the dictionary that they didn't know, and then made up a definition for what they thought the word might mean. And then they used that word with its new definition in a sentence. Why don't you try playing that game? I would just love to hear all of the fun, inventive definitions and sentences you come up with. You can share your favorites by having your parents email them to aggregatetheater at gmail.com or messaging them to aggregate social media accounts. Stuck Stories is an audio production by Aggregate Theatre Company. You can always stay up on the latest by following Aggregate on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and by subscribing to Aggregate's newsletter at aggregatetheatre.com. 
This episode's story and music was written by Matthew Hager. The voice of Clarabelle was performed by Allie Mae Carnes. And the voice of Brady by Matthew Hager. And I'm your host, Rebecca Bosson, hoping that you aren't stuck. But if you are, you know where we'll be for the next episode of Stuck Stories.